Top of the morning to you fine lads and lassies. Welcome to Chop and Brew. My name is Chip Walton, your host and video nerd. It's a blustery, chilly autumn day in the upper Midwest, which has me thinking of comfort food, specifically an Irish comfort food called Irish Coddle or Dublin Coddle. In this episode, we're going to make Irish Coddle and we're going to share it with our real, live, local Irishman, Damien McCann, head brewer at Summit Brewing Company here in St. Paul. Coddle is a traditional Irish comfort food typically made by layering potatoes, sausage, bacon, some herbs, and some other bits and bobs. This past St. Patrick's Day, I made some Irish coddle to share with Damo over a pint at the brewery. We sat down to enjoy a plate of fodder, talk about this dish, and also a bit about St. Patrick's Day history in Ireland. Coddle is certainly not exclusive to St. Patrick's Day. Rather, this dish is a perfect one for fall or winter get-togethers, holiday parties, or even for a nice set-it-and-forget-it kind of meal on a weeknight or weekend. So I thought I'd put this episode out now that we're entering fall and winter. Looking forward to hearing from Chop and Brew fans who try this dish out. It's awesome to inspire and influence people into new uh, realms of cooking. Uh, also, if you have tips, techniques, or family recipe for coddle that we're completely missing here, share that in the comments under the video or on social media wherever fine chop and brew chatter is happening also support chop and brew get you a beanie get you a shirt get you a cutting board help us out it's going into the holidays here probably got a gift for the chopper or brewer in your life or maybe just something for yourself for being awesome you can also subscribe or renew brew your own magazine at the link on our website and half of that cost comes back to support chop and brew that also makes a nice holiday gift so, without further ado, let's get the chitta chatta over with and get our coddle on. Chop for chop, brew for brew. Ah, drinking coffee. Yeah. Is there a is there kind of a salute? Uh, kind of something you say on St. Patrick's Day? Uh, why Padre? The blessings of uh, St. Patrick's Day to you. It is, of course, a, uh, a national holiday back home in Ireland, but it's also a Christian holiday. So uh, everything will be closed today back home. Uh, no school for the kids. Uh, all businesses will be closed. The pubs will be open, of course. Uh, you, have to, you have to drown the shamrock somehow, I suppose. Uh, but, but usually, uh, you know, you'd go to Mass in the morning, and then it's a really, it's a cultural holiday back home. It's, uh, it's almost like a cross between... Um, Thanksgiving and the 4th of July. So, uh, Mass in the morning, there's a bit of a parade afterwards. Uh, I grew up in the Irish countryside, so it was kind of a, a smaller affair with the, the parade. And then off to uh, usually the grandparents' house or, uh, or extended family, and it's kind of a family day. We watch the, nas uh, the National Gaelic Football and Hurling Club Championships on the television, so it's a bit like Thanksgiving there where you, you watch a bit of football and uh, <laughs> have a nice lunch and really you don't you don't hit the town until later that night, uh, you know, it's not quite the uh, excuse uh, for repressed Lutherans to get after uh, like it is over here, so <laughs> it's, it's a slightly different affair back home. You know us Yanks, we'll take any excuse well, to, yeah, it's exactly to right. do yeah. something yeah. non, take yeah. something traditional <laughs> today and turn it into a drunk fest. Slanche, you're, you're good health. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Well, we kind of already launched into it, but we're here in Damien McCann, Damo, head brewer of Summit Brewing. We're in his luxurious head brewer's it's office. It's quite the office with the beige walls. Yeah, yeah. that's good, all right, yeah. And the high ceilings, which will be <laughs> yeah. a wonderful echo. It is currently St. Patrick's Day. That's it why is. you look sharp. I look as sharp as I get. You look very sharp. Thank you. Sharpish. Yeah, sharpish. Yeah, sharpish. <laughs> <laughs> and we're enjoying a plate of Irish coddle, or I saw it called Dublin coddle. Um, Very traditional uh, dish for the east coast of Ireland, especially the Dublin area, yeah. A couple of years ago when I started working with Damo, I was like, oh, we're going to do a video. Uh, we want to do something traditional. Corned beef, right? Yeah, not so much. Not nowadays, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us about the, mis the well, misinformation. Well, we you know, there's, there's, there's been a tradition of exporting salted beef from, from Ireland uh, that goes back to probably the Middle Ages. And... Uh, you know, it's such an important day, St. Patrick's Day back home, that, uh, you know, having corned beef on such an important day, you know, at least in the last probably 100, 100 years or so, hasn't been the case. Um, when I was a lad, we would have maybe some nice spring lamb or some really good ham or something like that. Um, 
So, we, you know, corned beef traditionally was salted beef uh, from cattle uh, that was produced in the fall, and then it would be consumed after Lent uh, ended, so kind of around Easter time. But, uh, you know, really uh, for such an important day, you try and bring out you know, the, the best ingredients, the best fodder you have uh, available to you in corned beef. Well, it can be very good, believe me, it has a lot of flavor to it, um, at least in my experience back in, in uh, my childhood in Kildare. And my, my uh, grand, grandmothers and my ma would be, uh, would be pretty shocked <laughs> if we were bringing out salted beef on such an important day. So what would they make? They would often do a, a really nice leg of spring lamb. Okay. Um, or some really, really good uh, gammon or, or ham. That was kind of the traditional dish I remember as all that. Certainly cabbage, I mean, it, but, but you know, the Irish have cabbage with, with almost every Sunday roast and, and the spuds are always going to be, the ubiquitous spud would be included with almost every dish. Um, but I just remember it was really, really good lamb or, or a nice baked ham or something like that. But at the time you pointed me to Irish coddle. So I've made it once before, it turned out really good. Want to make it again? And actually, I've well, tasted this uh, one. It didn't last long last time. Mm. <laughs> well, coddle is really this traditional, very traditional Dublin comfort food. I grew up in Kildare, which is not too far from Dublin, so didn't have a huge amount of it when I was a lad, but uh, because we were out in the country as opposed to living in the city, but we were still fairly uh, familiar with it. You go to Dublin, you get into the back of a cab, you talk to the taxi driver, he'll give you an idea of what his his mass coddle recipe might be. But for every, you know, you can go to a, go to a dozen cab drivers and get thirteen different ideas of what constitutes Dublin <laughs> coddle. You know, for me, the the key was always spuds, uh, onions, uh, sausages, and then um, some recipes would have a bit of uh, would have rashers in there, or maybe some carrots. Rashers for rashers the, of bacon, yeah, for the yeah, American, yeah, exactly, yeah, back bacon. So essentially, the eye of the of the the bacon plus the what we call the streaky part, um, what you'd refer to as just regular bacon over here. So this is probably not the most dialed in, but I we diced or we sliced potatoes fairly thick. We sliced onion. We pre-cooked, as a couple of recipes suggested. We pre-browned the sausage. It's supposed to be pork sausage. We used brats because we're in the Upper Midwest. Mm -hmm. Someone's here. Someone smell the cattle. Come in. <laughs> Come in if you have beer. Hello? Mm. All right. They obviously don't have beer with them, okay. so they can't come in. So pork sausage, uh, I went brats. You clearly said there would have been better options to be a little more authentic. And then the bacon, pre-browned but not crispy. Then the idea is you, you're layering them. It's kind of like building a hot dish or a casserole. A wee bit, yeah, a wee bit like a casserole. I, the recipes I've seen always had the ingredients sliced. So the spuds would be sliced fairly thinly. The carrots would be fairly large diameter carrots, but sliced thinly. And then sliced onions. Um, some recipes don't seem to call for the bacon for the rashers. Mm -hmm. Some call for just adding the sausages um, in their raw state, not browning them beforehand. I like to brown them a wee bit. I think it adds a bit more flavor. But, you know. So that, so like you said, that smell. goes into the cab driver's dozen. There's just so many different ways. I left the carrots out because the Irish Country Woman Association said yep. so, and I figured they know what they're talking about. But I love this, and you also suggested so. You could use just regular water. The thing is, you're basically stacking this in a casserole dish, or in our case, a Dutch oven. It needs liquid. It has to, it's essentially, it's not really steaming or boiling, but a little bit of both. Um, and we went with a chicken broth mixture, and then I used cider, which was a homemade mm. hard cider out of secondary, just straight up used the wine thief, so it wasn't carbonated, but it's still as day, crystal clear, uh, pretty dry and tart. This is classic traditional Dublin comfort food. So, um, one of my friends said, you know, if you, if you came home from the pub after a few pints of the black stuff, you know, you might find some of this left over in the in the fridge and you'd warm it up. I suppose it's uh, you know it takes care of the munchies you might have after a night in <laughs> the town, you know. Um, but really hearty, really uh, comfort and fodder and. Uh, and the flavors are, are, you know, it's 
there's not a whole lot of intensity to it, but there's a lot of depth to the flavor. You know? Yeah, the parsley, um, and again, the spices from this sausage, even though it may not be the most traditional, I think they also added to, you know, that fat's dripping down into the liquid. Now it's kind of filling the Dutch oven. I get a very slight vinegar, which is nice, an apple cider yep. vinegar from this that I can't well, I think, And I think the cider goes well with the with the pork, with the, you know, with the sausages, with, the, with a little bit of bacon. I think that that's a good combination. Um, did you add any pepper to it? To the dish? Yeah, there was salt and pepper. It said oh, after pepper. each yeah. layer, we would dose it with salt and pepper. It said to taste, but I am always like, well, that doesn't make sense because we're not tasting it yet. So theoretically, we could have added more as well. But I feel like the black pepper standing out. It's a really good blend from Penzi's. That's got like four or five peppers, and a couple of them are pretty mm -hmm. in your face. And the spuds, did you use uh, like a russet type spud? No, I actually I used reds mm. peeled, euro coin thin sliced. Whatever the hell that means. Yeah, I, I uh, in, in Ireland the potatoes are are, um, are traditionally very floury. Oh, uh, a little so starchier. Little starches, so they'd be more like a uh, an American style russet. Not quite the same, but um, so they, they tend to absorb a little bit more of the liquid, I think, and they don't. Um, you know, they, they I think the, the, the texture is a little bit different. It was oven uh, baked. But red, red, red spuds would probably hold up a little bit better in terms of not falling apart. Well, that's the thing. So. We checked it an hour before the end, and it was still a very dry looking dish. And at that point, it says to take the lid off so you can get a little browning. Right. And from that point on, it seemed like it really starched it up to where when you stirred it up, it started to get kind of like this gravy, kind of roux almost kind of feel to it. Because at first, I was like, this just looks like soup that hasn't cooked long enough yet. So yeah, it broke down, Straight. but it makes sense that if you if you, a more starchy potato, a more vulnerable potato. That's right, yeah, yes. yeah. The Irish are more vulnerable. Right. <laughs> That's a new kids book for the wee ones, right? The vulnerable mm -hmm. potato. Overall, what do you think? I, know I think it's great. Are... I like the the blend of flavors. is very very good. Nothing overpowers anything else in there. Um, Good overall depth of flavor. I think the the cider complements the yeah. the uh, the rashers and the, the sausages really well. It was very nicely with this uh, glass of some great northern northern porter. So um, I think overall it's a, a fine effort. I think uh, the man back in, in Kildare would be proud of you, big lad. Well, I'm yeah. glad that you had a we had some kind of non-yank <laughs> um, take on. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is probably a bit more obscure for St. Patrick's Day in the United States, so it's kind of nice to... I love it, though. This different. would be a good winter, like you said, basically any time, especially if you're kind of in fix it and go, or fix, set it and forget it kind of mode. You could probably do it in slow cooker, but this I could definitely see being a winter staple. Very easy, you know, if you're doing stuff around the house, you only have to check on it basically twice. Once to take the lid off right. and once to figure out if it's done. Sausages are kind of the main thing you want to make sure they're done. Our one time we checked, they're still pretty pink, but I also know that when you roast or kind of steam stuff, they don't always lose the pinkness, even when they're done. Like meat will kind of keep that. And, I, and I've read, I read one recipe uh, actually from Darina Allen, who's a noted um, chef back in Ireland, and she was trying to develop a recipe for coddle. And uh, in that recipe, the sausages were just added straight in without browning beforehand. And even though they were fully cooked at the end of the dish, they, like you said, they, they had this kind of slightly pinkish hue from okay. what she wrote. And they looked almost as if they were, but they were, they were completely cooked through. But different flavors, but you know, that's, that's a different approach, I suppose. I like the browning effect because just like in brewing, where you get caramelization and, and uh, flavor development when you, you know, brown malts or crystallize your pale malts, you're going to get some additional flavor development when you, when you brown those, those sausages. I always like to use a cast iron pan, mm -hmm. you know, for the sausages, you get a bit more flavor through there. Yep. That's what we did. Um, well, yeah, man, I don't know, happy, we got a, we got a beer, oh, I think I hear the bagpipers. Well, yeah, the pipers are here. Literally, so, um, the pipes and drums are in the house. Everyone needs to get their earplugs and uh, grab a few jars and go from there. So. Man, thanks a lot, Amo. Thank you very Have much. Nice. That was great. As you can see, no problems here in the plane. No, man. So, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone.
Top of the morning to you lads and lassies. Welcome to Chap and Brew. I'm not sure if that was the right accent all the way through it. It's a blustery, chilly day in the upper Midwest. There's some over here with a budget truck making noise while I'm trying to shoot an intro. That's cool. See you later, sausage. Hi, sausage. Peace. We love you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really nice. I mean, it, and for the time of day, right now with the beer, I mean, I'm just powering through the air. It's <laughs> brilliant. That was great. I really enjoyed it. Do you guys want to keep it down over there or what, man? Come on. Is that rug being delivered to that house really more important than Chap Wilton getting his work done? Good. Yeah, I'll tell them back home. They'll get a kick out of it. So, Like, finally, those yanks are figuring out what St. Patty's Day is all about. <laughs> the neighborhood's crunk at 10 a.m., man. What is happening?